Happy 2022. 2022. Can you believe it? I can't even. I, I, I still am writing the wrong year on the little service warranty cards. But it's a new year. We're going to have a new shave, a new improved shave. We're going to be looking back at 100 years of razor history. And what was a shave like 100 years ago compared to today? All that and more. So let's get started. Well, I'm taking a quick pause. I've now applied my pre-shave. I'm sure you can guess which one I used. Um, just to start opening the packaging of this new Gillette razor. But before we do that, we'll talk quickly about some of these other ones. So I grabbed out of my collection. I know I say I never shave with anything from my collection, but today I'll make an exception for you guys. And uh, all of these are from what's called the New Improved Era, which began in 1921. And it, it basically was a new guard design from Gillette. They'd been using the old type guard. And uh, that was a kind of a curved base plate. This one has this flat base plate here. It's got these two stabilizer pins that kind of go through the razor blade and through the head. Um, and there's, there's actually a bunch of little improvements that Gillette calls out in their advertising for the new improved and why it was called new improved. But... Um, some of it was gimmicks, some of it was, you know, real mechanical advantages. This set here is kind of one of the nicer sets from the series, the Aristocrat set. Now this is the second iteration of the word Aristocrat. They did have an old type Aristocrat as well. So this would be the new improved Aristocrat put into a French ivory case. French ivory is just a fancy word for celluloid. Celluloid is just a fancy word for a very rudimentary early plastic technology. Um, so original gold plating on here. So you almost always typically see some kind of mark here on the razor head from it rattling back and forth and hitting the case. So it's pretty typical. Uh, okay, so that would be what was around 100 years ago from Gillette. And that's $5. That was, that was a you know, pretty significant amount of money considering that in the same time frame, you know, I think Henry Ford had the $5 workday you know, just a few years before this. Uh, with the assembly line at, at the Ford plant. So, I mean, this represented a lot of money, you know, maybe as much money as you'd earn all day or maybe, you know, half a day's of work. So it's a good amount of money to invest in a razor. It's equivalent to about $82 in today's currency. So uh, definitely a lot of money, I, I think, for a razor. And we have now this razor. Now this is something we got right off the shelf at uh, a big box store. And the retail price on this was $14. So it's not quite equivalent in terms of dollars. Now, they did have a really fancy version that was $150 that heated up and everything. But we had to pre-order that, and we just didn't do that. So um, we're going to give this a shot. So obviously, you know, the packaging is quite different. Uh, now, the, the celluloid case here usually uh, would have an outer shipper box, cardboard box around it. So we do have an outer cardboard box here. And as we slide it out we have a cardboard insert and we have a little set of instructions that say thank you or merci which is french and let's see we got some directions about how to shave with this bad boy and how to load the battery okay all right so i'm going to take it out of its protective Holder. I think this is something if you wanted to leave it on your counter or if you hang this somehow into your shower, you can, I guess, mount this um, little plastic clip. Let's see if it works right out of the box. I don't think it's going. Oh, it does. It vibrates. We are wondering what it did. And it swooshes. Doing a lot of this as we're going to shave. 
So we'll see exactly what this is supposed to do. I don't know, but uh, we'll find out together. <laughs> so with that being said, we'll kind of just quickly reapply or re-soften some of this soap. It's actually not bad that it's been sitting on my face. It's probably helped to prepare my beard. We'll be using, again, my go-to product for um, all my tests and reviews. I like to use a soap that's more neutral. I don't want to be additioning the soap at the same time. Kind of got a little loose in the, in the tub here, so I'll just take it out and build a little lather and then start transferring it to my face. You know, 19, the 1922, still the roaring 20s, right? People think of, um, you know, the great Gatsby. Everyone's wearing tuxedos and top hats and looking fancy. And people have got automobiles now. And the average worker is starting to have a little extra money in their pocket. Surplus, as we would call it, is starting to develop in the economy and in everyday Americans' lives. And so people can afford to have things like pastimes. And you can go watch a baseball game and, you know, go see one of those new moving pictures. Uh, lots of fun stuff was happening. Yeah, I mean, a lot of innovation. People were coming up with new ideas. Science and technology was really starting to blossom. Uh, it's, a, it's a good period of time. And, you know, that's why Gillette wanted to do something different and people always ask me is the old type were they calling it the old type in the olden days they actually were once the new improved razor came out they started referring to their khaki razor their you know ball end old type as an old type razor because it was the older style design and the new improved razor was supposed to be you know something for the businessman something for the banker the CEO, the executive, and they had all these images in their advertisement campaigns of the day showing, you know, five out of eight CEOs prefer a Gillette new improved razor. And they'd show them like reading the, you know, New York Times or Wall Street Journal, whatever publication was at the time, Saturday Evening Post, who knows. Um, but, you know, today people are flipping through their phone, looking at TikTok, seeing advertisements from Gillette, and, you know, they're grabbing, they're grabbing the latest and greatest in their mind, and that's what people were doing back here. They were, they were grabbing what they thought was the latest and greatest, and they wanted the new fangled device and the new improved. Well, guess what? This is the new improved now, right? It's, it's vibrating, and it swooshes, and we're going to see exactly what it does starting right now. Let's make it vibrate. Oh, what? What, what was I thinking? Now it's going to go. Yeah, we'll, we'll trim up these sideburns and shape them. I will, I will admit, it's not horrible. And funny enough, the vibration actually does help. But if you know razor history, that's not a new idea at all. Look back at, you know, the Stolly Live Blade razor. I mean, it, did, it gets the job done. I won't lie, though. I think there's actually... Um, a considerable amount of tugging as compared to a double edge. Let's just get this guy loaded up with some DE blades. Oh, look at that. They just flying in. And that's a newfangled device we have is, you know, I just had an Amazon drone just drop these off. <laughs> so for our double edge blade, we'll be using also a Procter & Gamble product, a Permasharp. I firmly believe it's my conspiracy theory that these replace the Paul Silvers. So if anyone asks me, Matt, what do you like to use now? Now that Paul Silver's, you can't find them. I say, I think the Permasharps are the same thing. And if it was my guess, there was probably something to do with the licensing of the name Paul Silver, because that was an older brand that P&G acquired either the name or the technology or the um, brand or whatever. So this is the Permasharp loaded into our new improved 1920s, 1922 aristocrat here. 
hundred year difference. <laughs> I like it a lot more. <laughs> I won't lie. And maybe it's just because I'm familiar. Maybe it's just because I'm used to double edge. I've been using double edge for 15 years now. Actually, it's 16 years now. Um, Do you see how much faster I can go through this? Because I only have one blade, it just doesn't feel as much drag. Like the vibration certainly does help with this to kind of reduce that that you know surface tension kind of friction feeling, the drag feel. But the one blade goes right through it so fast. And if I actually come over and compare, listen. It's actually not as close. So, you know, you can improve some things, but some things don't need any improvement at all. Well, there's this thing in the world called profit. And I do not fault any company from wanting to make a profit. That's why companies exist. But in the pursuit of profit, sometimes you can lose sight of the, of the goal. And if the goal is terrific grooming and the technology was mastered 100 years ago, it may be a little hard to continue a profit from a product that didn't change after 100 years. And the reason is competition. Gillette faced enormous competition with double-edged razors as time went on. They were stuck making these very expensive, very well-built metal razors out of stamped sheet metal and, and, and turned and lathed brass components, plating them in precious metals like gold and silver and nickel, rhodium even. And then they're making these fancy cases over here. They're having to take out advertisements to sell you know, this whole set just so that they had to profit from the blade because we know this was a, a, a loss leader. The razor and blade model is from Gillette that they were losing money on making these, these razor handles, but they were gaining it as people bought the double-edged blades. Well, as more and more people made double-edged blades only and didn't have to have all the overhead of a giant machine shop for the razor handle production, Gillette faced more and more competition. Now everyone's just gonna buy the double-edged blade that's cheaper. And of course, Gillette kept on telling people, you know, and, and rightly so, we have a new blade. It's now stainless steel. It's now platinum coated. It's now carb, you know, carbon steel. It's now, you know, whatever. They had a million different, you know, versions of different coatings and different thicknesses and different material types. And it was always with the idea of a better shave. But we know that they needed to stay in business. We know they had to, they're a publicly traded company, right? They had to report a profit to their shareholders. And I, I, I can't blame them essentially that they basically lasted till the 1960s and they had, to, they had to jump the shark essentially. They had to jump ship from double edge. And that's when they got into the cartridge game. And that actually set back all their competitors who were just making blades only decades. You know, they now all of a sudden all these guys who made double-edged blades were, you know, not able to um, make cartridge razors for almost a decade because Gillette started patenting all the technology around this cartridge. You know, this this is a very interesting design if you think about it. You have these little tiny pieces of of, of such thin little wafers of steel, basically little ribbons of steel that are sharpened and suspended onto a plastic injection molded, you know frame here and secured in place just right and then that clips in with a special unique patent design into this handle so it locks on and they patented all of this and now no one could could touch them throughout the 90, late you know mid 60s 70s even into the 80s they had all these patents and that's when Gillette just became this behemoth and then they would introduce new versions okay we got the track 2 we got the Atra you know we We've got the, the sensor, we've got the sensor Excel, we've got the Mach 3, and they just kept on going and going and going. That's, that's what the razor history comes down to. And again, I don't blame them 
uh, essentially for, for needing to stay in business. The alternative is if they didn't create a profit, if they didn't create a new product that they could have that was unique to them, they'd be out of business. And if a company goes out of business, it's a failure, right? And uh, so they had to keep on innovating. And I don't, I don't, uh, I don't blame them. But if we're if we're going back to the intention again, so Gillette succeeded in staying in business, and now they they were acquired by Procter and Gamble in 2005, and they're you know a huge huge successful company now, right? Everyone in the world knows about Gillette, and everyone knows about Fusion Razors and Mach 3 Razors and all this. I bet you can go almost anywhere in the world to a drugstore and pick up a Gillette razor. That's that's phenomenal. It's like Coca Cola's distribution, right? But if we're going back to the the, the, the purpose is to get a great shave. I can't help but say they got it right a hundred years ago with the double-edged razor. And that's just my opinion. I'm sure there's going to be plenty of people who are in the comments who are going to say, what are you talking about? I've got a fusion and I get a fantastic shave. Great. Keep on using your fusion. I, I don't hate on you. I'm not, I, there's no judgment or hate. If you like it, if you enjoy it, if it's fantastic and easy, great. You're, you're in the majority, trust me. Double-edged shaving is definitely a small, small sliver of the, of the market. Um, but even a behemoth like Gillette acknowledges that. You know this because they put out their King Seed Gillette razor last year, this Heritage razor, you know. They wanted to pay tribute. It's a double-edged razor, double-edged blades. And Gillette still has double-edged factories. These are made in Russia in a Procter & Gamble-owned factory. They have factories in India. They have factories in Argentina still, all over. Okay, so they're still very much in double edge, just not so much in the USA or in Australia. You know, more, more of these other countries are, you know, they'll really push the double edge still. But um, maybe I told you too much. Maybe I, I was on my soapbox a little bit too much in this video. But what say you? Has 100 years done it? Have we come so far? in 100 years? Are you getting a fantastic quality shave compared to 100 years ago? Hey, this provided a, a good shave. Uh, it wasn't horrible. I wasn't going, oh gosh. Hey, it was, it was, it was fine. I don't actually think the result was as good as this, but it, uh, the vibration wasn't bad. Uh, we know that, that it helps reduce surface tension, helps give a little more comfortable experience, but you can't help the fact that you still have five pieces of steel touching your face compared to one. And I prefer the one, I think it's a little more efficient. I think it's more comfortable. I get less ingrown hairs. I enjoy the process. I enjoy the history. I enjoy the restor restoration of these guys and the preservation of, of these cool pieces of hardware. They were American made. I want to know what you think about all of these big ideas that I said in today's video in the comments below. Please leave a comment if you prefer what's out today or if you prefer what was made 100 years ago. And if you do leave a comment, you are entered into win this. The official Razor Emporium black and blue t-shirt. I have finished up now with a little Parasso balm. My skin's looking fine. I hope I don't have any ingrown hairs. I try to keep the cartridge on more of my cheek area where I'm less prone to ingrown hairs. So, had a great shave overall and had a good little talk with you guys about all these big ideas. So, I wanna hear from you guys in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for checking out our channel. We're gonna have a lot of new videos this year for you. We'll see you next time at Razor Emporium 4. All themes vintage shaving. Thanks, guys.